Are we going to do the French one? Yeah, we're gonna have a, we have a French uh, French viewer here, so I'm going to read the, the French part of these. So. <laughs> uh, bon oui, your accent was pretty good. <laughs> I say. Bonjour Dave, merci pour le super contenu sur G Counter TV. Vraiment notre uh, chaîne favorite sur YouTube. So he says, Hi Dave, thanks a lot for the content on Chicago TV, our favorite channel uh, on YouTube. So a question for the doc. I am 46 years old, um, 5 foot 11, 185 pounds, very lean. I've been on TRT for many years. I take 200 milligrams a week of the Sasson and Tate uh, injection, EOD. What's EOD? Every other day. Okay, every other day. Uh, a small, uh, a small around 25 milligrams of Arimidex uh, every three days. And I was wondering if it would be beneficial to add DHEA or prednolone to my protocol. And if so, at what dosage and frequency, thanks to the great info you provide, Martin. Well, you don't treat numbers, but it might be nice to see what the pregnenolone levels and the DHEA levels are. Now, uh, we can test for DHEA serum. We can test, test for DHEA sulfate. Uh, as far as I know, within the last month or so, we don't, well, ubiquitously it's not available. Uh, a test for 7-keto DHA, another metabolite. Um, uh, so we can test two of the three anyway. But it'd be nice to know what we're starting with before we just throw something out there. It's hard to determine clinically if someone's short on DHA. It's a hormone that's largely made you know, through the, the adrenal glands. And if your levels are low, and because of the way the cascade of hormones works, starting with cholesterol and either going to uh, gluco or mineral corticoids versus what we call the sex hormones, you know, pregnenolone, uh, DHEA, progesterone, testosterone, estrogen in large groupings, categories, um, you know, it can affect the balance of those hormones if, for example, again, the DHEA is short, um, uh, so that you might not have enough of the glucocorticoids or mineral corticoids, the things that can help, uh, for example, reduce inflammation. So sometimes when you uh, supplement with DHA, if it's, if it's appropriate, if you're short in it, so to speak, you'll find you get an increase in energy and some decreased inflammation. Um, DHA is considered uh, you know, an arbiter of the immune system to some degree. So uh, you know, if someone's getting frequent colds, and uh, infections, and, and you'd argue, uh, you know, how is it the arbiter of the immune system? Well, again, you can argue because of the way it affects that shunting or not of the uh, of the cholesterol into these again the so-called sex hormones or the uh, the corticosteroid hormones, which are great for uh, modulating the immune system. That that's the mechanism mechanism of action again that that, that we presuppose is going on here. Uh, in, its, in its effect on the immune system. So in other words, when you're getting sick, um, and this goes back to the 1950s, I'm gonna forget the doctor's name, but he was a leader in, in um, researching uh, uh, cortisone and cortisol. Uh, but you might step up your uh, levels of cortisol uh, using, say for example, hydrocortisone, like they used to and still do, and uh, fight off the bug. And, and get through, uh, you know, not only uh, the bug uh, fighting it off, but with, you know, tons of energy and working harder and better than you ever have. So anyway, that's sort of a, a, a setup for, you know, whether you even want to look at this or address it or, or the reasons for addressing it, I guess I should say. And again, addressing it clinically. I ask people, well, hey, uh, you know, are you getting frequent colds and infections? Uh, is your energy shot? No. And I'm looking at a serum DHA of, uh, you know, 179. I go, well, okay, well, then let's not mess with it. It's not below normal. It may not be considered optimum. Uh, and I'm making this a little simple because DHEA tends to be stored more as a sulfate than it is just serum DHA, right? So, um, uh, you know, you got to look at those in conjunction with one another. They might have a relatively low DHA serum, but they might have a a DHA sulfate of 300, and if you go look at reference intervals, you'll see that's pretty healthy. So uh, again, all this has to be taken into account, the clinical aspect of it as well as the, the labs. For pregnenolone, um, you normally don't have patients that you see clinically and go, oh wow, yeah, definitely sounds like a shortage of pregnenolone to me. 
pregnenolone uh, is associated with the appreciation of color, uh, cognition, okay, and of course, uh, you know, appreciation of color is, is uh, arguably almost, if not entirely, in the eye of the beholder, although we can test someone for color blindness uh, objectively, clearly. Uh, but we're not talking about that. Um, uh, you know, cognition can be on or off for a multitude of reasons that have nothing to do with having sufficient pregnenolone. So that's one where we might look to the numbers more so than you know clinical aspects, but uh, or signs and symptoms. But um, you know, there are uh, well, pregnenolone. We talked about DHEA already. Pregnenolone can be converted to uh, uh, if it's taken by mouth in a supplement form, uh, something called five aloe pregnenolone which is great for calming. It, it, it works on the GABA receptors. Uh, can be converted eventually to uh, f five, let's see, or no, dihydroprogesterone also works on the GABA receptors. So uh, I guess you could argue it could also help with a calming effect or not having your usual calm if you're short in it. So there are some good reasons for approaching this, but you know, do we deal with this a lot in practice? Not as often as you might imagine because again, they're not hit you over the head symptoms uh, or necessarily ones that you can pin down and say, oh, that's absolutely the reason why you have low energy. Uh, and they're not the glamour hormones like testosterone is where, you know, uh, you get someone's testosterone levels back up from the gutter and it's like Popeye eating spinach. They go, thank God, I feel so much better. Or, you know, you, you fix, uh, the levels of estrogen in a female who's suffering from hot flashes and night sweats, and they go, thank you, you know, God, I feel so much better. Um, these are ones that are obviously a lot more subtle, uh, but um, in regards to, yes, for the dosage and frequency, of course it depends on the levels you're at, but typically, uh, just like with a starter dose for testosterone, because your body will adjust, mm -hmm. we find, um, you know, because it likes, it likes almost like a thermostat it acts almost like a thermostat in that, um, you know, even if it's low, if you add to it, it'll say, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take it even lower down because you're adding, and I don't think we need that much. I'm being anthropomorphological, or uh, sorry, I mispronounced that um, in, my, in my description here. But uh, the point is the body will react by producing even lower amounts of the hormone. So you start with, uh, say, 100 milligrams or even as low as 50 milligrams of pregnenolone, and, um, and see how you do, if you notice any change and how the labs change. And then, um, and you can go as high as, as probably uh, 200 milligrams relatively safely without having to worry about, you know, excess conversion or anything like that. With DHEA, my favorite is to use 7-keto DHEA because it won't directly convert to another hormone. Um, so, um, you know, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, a, a, an effect on, you know, increasing your estrogen, for example, by adding 7-keto DHA like you would if you use just DHA like you would get at, you know, any typical, uh, even nowadays, you know, a Walgreens or, yeah, yeah, a, or yeah, even a supermarket right. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that would be the only caveat there. Uh, uh, you know, probably the biggest take home of this whole monologue I'm giving is, right. you know, uh, seven keto DHA I prefer uh, for that reason, and I would use anywhere from uh, for a female 100 milligrams uh, once in the morning, or 50 in the morning, and maybe be 50 just after lunch. And um, uh, for a male, uh, maybe as 100 and 100, or as much as 200 and 200. Um, and really, that's it. I guess uh, I answered this question mainly about the. Uh, the DHA and the pregnant one, right? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thanks, Doc.